Hey, today, I uh, reached the stage in life that I have to write this stuff down. <laughs> if I don't, I'll forget half of it and mumble the rest of it. Uh, but the VFW here, post 539, was chartered back in the early 20s, so we've been in continuous operation for about 95 years now. Uh, we have an auxiliary also that works with us that consists of, of different uh, VFW spouses and family relatives. Uh, our mission is to assist veterans in the transition from military to civilian life and to assist needy veterans, their families, their widows, and their children. Uh, we have five key positions down there. One's the post commander, the uh, post quartermaster, our post service officer, the auxiliary president, and the auxiliary secretary treasurer. The uh, post commander is responsible for the overall operations post, uh, post quartermaster, conducts all our financial operations, he makes all, writes all the checks, makes all the deposits and so on. Then our, uh, our financial records, uh, they're audited monthly by a, a board of trustees. And the entire post is audited annually by our district commander. The uh, post, well, our service officer is a contact point for information about the, any benefits available to veterans, <coughs> how to apply, who to contact, and so on. And on that line, if you know of any veteran might need any assistance or any information about the various programs that may be available, <coughs> I'd ask them to contact our service officer, that's Tricia Baird. Her phone number is 479-414-0952, or get in touch with me at 918-652-7103. Now some of the programs that we're involved in is uh, we uh, now work with the uh, Disabled American Veterans chapter out of Claremore. We provide food baskets for up to 125 needy veteran families. Uh, we do that once a quarter. Uh, we provide medical equipment. Uh, we have wheelchairs, walkers, canes, bathrooms, shower seats, hospital beds, and that sort of thing. It's loaned out at no charge for as long as the people need it. We deliver it if necessary, and they're through with it again if necessary. We'll pick it up, bring it back, get it ready to uh, loan out to the next needy family that uh, is in need. Uh, we conduct uh, Memorial Day services out at West Lawn Cemetery, uh, generally with speech and uh, a, a, a patriotic program. And we set, uh, over that same Memorial Day weekend, we set uh, over 2,000 American flags on the veterans' graves in uh, six various cemeteries. That includes West Lawn, uh, Salem, uh, Nusenor, Wilson, and so on. Uh, we install and maintain uh, 36 American flags along Main Street, uh, from Brahms all the way to 13th Street. Uh, the city purchased the initial set of flags in the mounting heart there with the understanding that we take it from there and uh, our intent now is to fly the flags year-round if we can possibly keep that going. We can wait to see how the wind and destruction of the flags as the flags always go. But uh, if, if we're going to fly at least a few of them year-round. Uh, we also participate in the Labor Day and the Christmas parade and in parades in other towns so when we're made aware of them and are invited to participate. Our source of income uh, consists of about $400 a year. That's our share from the, our membership dues. <coughs> and we make about $1,200 each year off our Buddy Pocket program. And then the remainder is donations by members, uh, business owners, and local citizens. So you can imagine that the, our, the $1,600 I've talked about, the membership dues and the uh, Buddy Pocket program, that pays our insurance, our utilities, and a few dollars left over. So all of the other programs that I've been talking about uh, basically is funded by the donations from, from people like you, and I can't tell you how much we appreciate that. Without those donations, those programs uh, wouldn't be available, certainly not in the scope that we, we want to keep them going. Uh, we're located down at, uh, in the old county health building there across from uh, the football field. <coughs> the city rents it to us for a dollar a year. And their help goes a long way towards us staying in operation. Uh, as I mentioned, the financial situation without that would be very difficult for us uh, to stay in operation. And uh, we thank the city and the businesses, citizens, 
for all the financial and board support that they give the VFW and the support they give the great program that they're involved in. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. <coughs> if not, uh, again, I thank you for inviting me today, and I'm always happy to uh, publicize and discuss the various programs that VFW is involved in. It's the sort of thing that uh, a lot of it goes below the radar screen a lot of times, but the programs we do, uh, uh, it's that uh, you have to see the faces on the veterans' families, their children, and you, you realize how much of a benefit it is and uh, very worthwhile program. So thank you again. Uh, hey, Bill. Sir. Just, just a comment. Um, the work that you've got done with the flags up and down, down Main Street looks awesome. So thank, thank you. you very much. We appreciate that. Yeah, I've driven the town several times, and I think that uh, uh, the initial impression that visitors are going to have when they come to Main Street has got to be very positive. I know it gives me a lift each time I drive Main Street. Thank you for saying so. When, and you also uh, headed up the project for updating the, the names on the W. Yeah, that was, that was a program we conducted a couple of years ago. How that came about, uh, when uh, the old Sherman Funeral Home uh, went out of business and uh, uh, Jimmy Spurlock brought the, the business moved down to integrity. Well, he called us and let us know that they had found about uh, two dozen uh, of the veterans' bronze plaques that were down in the basement there. That I guess in the final years of operation, it, it reached the point that uh, they weren't setting those flags after the, after the veterans were buried. And so Vernon and I went down and picked them up, and we went over to the post the library. Uh, they've done a wonderful job through, they've got a, a list in the, uh, uh, those cards, in the, what do you call it, the obituary cards, yeah. And so we went through all of those, and we, uh, we found the date of death and so on like that, went through the uh, newspapers and the bio card, and we found out what cemeteries these fellows were buried in, and we took them out and uh, we, we found them at the day site. So. And then we also, uh, when we, after we recognized that, uh, that that had happened, we, as long as while we were looking at those obituary cards, we realized that we had a whole lot more uh, veteran deaths uh, and uh, killed in action types than were on that the plaque that was down originally. The initial uh, Doughboy plaque had, if I remember right, 84 names on it. And when we got through going through all that list, going back to the First World War, there are now 176 names down there. So there are all kinds of people that have been, that have been missed. I did the back of the ceremony down there at, uh, at the post office when we dedicated those uh, memorials. As a matter of fact, one of the things we found out in going through uh, the, the obituaries that we had a, a youngster, <coughs> and his name escapes me right now, he was, was raised here, he, he moved to California at about 12 years of age or so, but he was a Medal of Honor winner in, uh, in Vietnam. And so they made a special point of honor in him during that ceremony. And uh, it, was, uh, it was inspiring in looking through those bios uh, of all the individuals from this area, southern Oklahoma County is what that takes into account. Uh, the number of uh, <coughs> medals for valor and, and bravery and it, uh, it speaks well to citizens of this part of the world that uh, those fellows, when they're required to step up, they did so in grand style. So I'm very proud of that. Well, thank you for doing that. Thank you. What's the eligibility to join? The VFW? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a list of, uh, of uh, decorations or, or medals. But basically what it amounts to is that you needed to be in a theater of action where uh, there was uh, at least some risk of, uh, of injury with the foreign enemy. Uh, it's a, the Navy in particular is, is, a, is a real sticky, wicked, slippery thing. There's so many of the, uh, the uh, uh, deployments of the Navy ships, while they're, in, while they're out to sea, their position and what they're doing is, is classified. I mean, naturally, you wouldn't want the enemy to know where your ships were. And so we've had a lot of ships that were involved in different different actions that uh, the, it wouldn't get put on the list until years later. But that happened to me. And we had a, 
was already my ship that Franklin D. Roosevelt's aircraft carrier. He was awarded a Naval Air Conditioning Medal, and uh, we didn't find out about it until, actually, I didn't find out about it until about five years ago. And this was some, well over 20 years after it happened. So for the Navy individuals, there are probably quite a few out there that don't know about. But that's basically what it comes to. That if you've been in a position that, uh, that uh, you could have been, uh, well, if you were at risk of injury by an enemy force, that's, that's the basic qualification. How's that different from the American Legion? Uh, <coughs> the American Legion is, and, and every one of them are, are in my opinion, are, are heroes. But what it boils down to is a guy goes in the military and he says, here I am, Uncle Sam, and you got me up to my life. And then Uncle Sam decides what he's going to do with it and where he's going to send you. So some guys wind up in combat, others wind up in support roles, it's whatever. But every one of them, uh, said, you know, wherever you send me, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we obviously, we're going to strike. <laughs> You're there for the going. But that's what it amounts to is the American Legion are guys who served in the military honorably during times of for war, but weren't that that weren't called into uh, the combat zone. But heroes nonetheless. Any other questions? Well thanks again for having me.